Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I am excited to be talking to you about my top seven favorite features of Keepa that you should be using in your Amazon business on a regular, consistent basis. And at the very least, you should be using them uh, in specified periods when you need them best. And so there's so many different features that are involved with using Keepa, uh, the software. And I've got a whole playlist on my channel for utilizing Keepa in your Amazon business that I recommend checking out from basic training to more advanced training on the Keepa Data Product Finder, on regular graph reviews, on weird Keepa graphs. That, that you could encounter in your Amazon business. But ultimately, uh, today I wanted to go through the top seven features that I like the most. There are tons of them. And so I'm picking my favorite ones, but these are the ones that you should be using in your business more consistently and regularly. Now, before I get into that, I do want to let you know I do have a free 16, 17 page Keep a Training Guide at my website, askjimmysmith.com forward slash keep a guide. You can get that completely free uh, and you can just go there. It's what I use to train my employees, what I've used to train uh, tons of people that have gone through my course and book, et cetera. And so you can get that for free at askjimmysmith.com forward slash keep a guide. Uh, but today, again, we're going through my top seven features of Keepa, And let me go ahead and share my screen to go through all of these. First, the very first one is clearly the graph information. I just pulled up a random product, Altoids. That's just what I use most of the time in these videos now. Uh, but the this one's obvious, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I've made tons of videos uh, on this particular topic. But the graph information that Keepa gives you is what allows me and the other people that have been successful coming through my stuff uh, be successful in picking out the right products to sell on Amazon. The three main things that you want to look at, and I cover this in most Keepa videos. I'm going to go quickly. The first one is this green sales rank line right here. It helps you to know if something is selling and selling consistently. The second thing is this pink line or dot if it's an older graph, but this pink line is the buy box line. And so we like to take a look at that as often as possible to make sure that a product has price stability uh, as you are buying it to make sure you can make money on it, uh, right? So the more stable this line is, the better it is for your business. And then third is the seller trend graph down here at the bottom to see how many new sellers are coming on the listing, how many have sold off of the listing. Uh, and that helps to know that the competition isn't just going crazy uh, and that you're not having a ton of new sellers skyrocket onto this listing which will then lead to your prices tanking. And so this is the very first and foremost reason. I can't ignore it. It's a pretty obvious one. But let's get into the second option, which is the ability to track products. So if I'm looking at this keep a graph, you can track products here by clicking on this tab. You can actually uh, get to more advanced or even pro options with your tracking, depending on what it is that you want to track. I've actually done a full video on using this and the functionality behind it, but you can have Keepa track hundreds of products for you and let you know that, hey, this price is now going up or maybe the price is going down. You can have it let you know uh, when a sales rank hits a certain level. Maybe you've got a product that sells well during Q4 and in the summer you find this and you tell Keepa to alert you when the sales rank is at a certain sales rank level or lower um, or higher. You can switch to increased tracking as well. There's so many options from a tracking perspective. If you really want to deep dive on that, I do recommend checking out my video that's completely and only on the tracking features where I go through all of these things because there's so much functionality that you should be using. It'll track it for a year uh, or less if you want it to. There's multiple options if you want it to track for a year or less, etc. And again, there's advanced and even just basic tracking. So depending on what it is that you want to track. Uh, most people probably use the basic version, but Pro can get very granular, which helps you to get the right products in your business uh, to be tracking properly for, for when you want to buy things or maybe even when you want to sell out of things if, if they ultimately aren't doing very well. Now, the third feature that is my favorite uh, on Keepa, and I'm just going in order here, is the data tab, but specifically the offers section right here. So if you're looking at the data tab in the offers section, you can see a lot of information regarding if it is a prime seller, an FBA seller, or if it doesn't show prime seller like this one down here, then that means it's an FBM seller that is on the listing. But you can see tons of information regarding what has sold approximately out of their inventory over the period of time that you have in this range here. We've got 90, so that's what's showing there. 
You can also see this sold last 30 days. So there's a lot of good information you can take uh, and, and use for your buying decisions. You can see that these sellers sold a good amount of units. Well, then that gives you much more uh, ability to know how many you can test or how many you should send in to Amazon. But I will say this, take this with a grain of salt because sometimes it can be uh, inaccurate. You might see some like this one here where it jumped up to 20 and then all of a sudden tanked back down. I don't know if it's accurate that they've sold 20. It might just be that they listed a bunch and then it, it got changed for some reason. I'm not 100% sure how these things work, but I do like to look at this sometimes to get a good feel for what Keepa thinks they may have been selling. Again, it's not perfect, but it is a good um, good thing to look at. Additionally, you can look at their stock levels if they're uh, if Keepa is able to pull that and report that information. They do show the stock levels for you as well, so you know kind of what your competitors look like on this tab. You can also sort just strictly by Prime. So if you only want to look at the FBA offers that are there, you can just select that, and then there will no longer be the FBM options uh, in the offers section. Additionally, within the offer section, you can export things or export things into a, a, a an Excel sheet. Uh, you can use it for Google Drive, etc. So you can really manipulate a lot of data that Keepa gives you regarding um, regarding the particular products. And then you can see seller information, their ratings, review counts, if they're good sellers and competitors, how long they've been on the listing here, first seen and last seen. Um, so there's a ton of great information in this data offers tab. Now, the fourth option that I find is extremely helpful is this buy box statistics. So we've got a lot of offers here, but we don't know how often people are getting the buy box. Now, before I show you this, the caveat is that buy box can be different in different parts of the country. So don't just take this as, uh, you know, at Keepa's word, uh, because there are going to be some differing information uh, pieces depending on where you're at in the country. Somebody in St. Louis will have a different buy box most likely than someone in New York or someone in Florida or California. And that's be just because Amazon takes a look at a ton of different factors like the seller history, the price, the, the location um, nearest to the person purchasing the products so that they can fulfill their uh, shipping promises, et cetera. But I still like to look at the buy box statistics and here's why. I just wanna make sure that there's a, an even spread or at least a decent spread of who is getting the buy box in this case. We've got a lot of sellers. So is Amazon rotating the buy box out? That is what I wanna find out. In this particular case, yes, this looks great. They're really rotating it out. Now, if it was 80% for one and then five and five and four and three, yes, they're rotating it, but not as much. And so maybe I'm not willing to test as many products because I don't want to be stuck with as much as, um, you know, maybe I would be testing here because there's less competition from a buy box perspective. I have the a good ability to get the buy box because of it. Um, and so you can also see if Amazon's been on the listing, you can see how often they Amazon gives the buy box to themselves. You can check the date uh, range as well. This is the last 30 currently, but I can select 90, 180, 365, and you can see all of that changes as well. So there's a ton of great information uh, that you can glean by looking at the buy box statistics. And you can also export that information as well if you wanted to save it for whatever reason or manipulate it, um, if you wanted to save some of the seller information, et cetera. So that is the fourth piece is the data buy box statistics tab. The fifth one that I highly recommend utilizing regularly is the variations tab. I have done a specific video on how to evaluate variations using Keepa. There's multiple different ways that I recommend, but this is one of those ways. So the two of the, the biggest ways to do to evaluate variations is by looking at the price history and seeing what has happened, uh, but while also realizing that variations look different on Keepa on these graphs than if they weren't uh, a variation. And so if you click into this variations tab, which only shows up if it is a variation listing, by the way, um, if you click over here, you can see a lot of information about each of the variations on this listing. So currently there's no buy box on these other three variations. This is the one we're currently on on the bottom. You can see the pricing history for the buy box as well as just the regular new sellers. But the one that I care about the most is the reviews. And so I like to use the reviews to ensure that I'm buying products that are selling because if it's got a review, on the listing, that means that it's selling well enough to get a review from a customer. In most cases, I've always heard that it's about one review for every 100 sales. However, you could be the first 
sale that happens and somebody leaves for a few. So take that as well, you know, and use it sparingly. It's just something that I've I've heard in the past and I've always kind of um, just continued to push forward. But this particular one, I can tell these other three have had zero ratings, zero reviews. And so to me, that is a big red flag. I'm not going to be buying these other three variations. I'm going to be looking towards just this one. Now, if the others had had 100 and 50 and 10, well, then that means to me, I can look at those two to see if I want to sell on those listings as well, because I can buy those same products and send them in on those variations. They just might sell slower than the one that has 369 reviews and ratings on the listing. I do like that they put this little trophy next to the one that has the most. I don't know why. I've always thought that was funny. But uh, either way, I love to use the variations tab whenever there are variations to be evaluated, in addition to utilizing the price history for evaluating my variations. And again, I did a full video on that on this channel. You can check it out on my Keepa playlist as well. Now, the sixth thing that I really love, and I've done a full video on this too, which is the data product finder. And so if I come over here, you can see that this is the data product finder. If you go to keepa.com, click data, click product finder, that is where you get to this. And this is how you can start to source for particular products that meet certain parameters. Again, there's a full video on my channel for how to use it, but you can find products that are between a particular sales rank. You can find products that are over or under a certain sales rank. You can find products with no sales rank at all. Uh, you can find products that have a particular price if you're looking to hit a certain selling price. And you can do it based off of averages for the current, the 30 days, 90 days, 180 day averages. And I love that because you can look for products that have stability in price, stability in sales rank, stability in number of sellers, all of that. And there's tons of data points. Here's the new third party FBA price. Uh, you can also take a look at uh, if you want to sell used products, you can look at that. Uh, there's tons of data points here that I don't want you to just ignore. I highly recommend just playing around with this data product finder because there's so much into it. You can even look by particular categories, subcategories. You can exclude certain things as well so that it doesn't pull up a particular brand. There's tons of different things in terms of new offer counts and different data points that you can put in here to refine your search into a, a search that you can look for more products. You can start here and then look for the products after you find good ASINs. You can look for the product suppliers after that. And so this is a very important feature of Keepa. There's whole courses on it that I recommend uh, checking out as well. And the proven Amazon course, you can check that out. Um, that there's uh, courses specifically on using the data product finder. Um, links for those courses are below, by the way, in the description. If you're interested in any of that, you can just go to my website, actually, at askjimmysmith.com forward slash sell dash on dash Amazon and find my recommendations for other people's courses uh, that you can um, that you can purchase to help go through some of these things as well. But ultimately, that sixth feature of the data product finder is key. This is one that you really want to get to learn and know because you can find thousands upon thousands of products that you can sell and you can have as replenishable Amazon arbitrage and even wholesale products. You could even manipulate this data to figure out private label opportunities. There's so many things that can come from this data product finder. Um, and then the seventh and final feature that I highly recommend is the data product viewer, which is a little bit different. So in the product finder, you're using all of this, these pieces of information to find new products, find things that you want to see if you can source and sell. Well, in the product viewer, you're actually uploading a list of ASINs and it will pull back all of the Keepa data for those particular products. So if you're using tactical arbitrage or using anything similar to that, and you want to run a whole list of those, those products that came back from tactical arbitrage through Keepa to get all of the historical data for you to manipulate it properly. You can run a full list of ASINs or UPC codes through this and Keepa will pull back just the information for those particular products, which allows you to see all of the, you know, the pricing history, the seller history, et cetera, and make your best buying decisions possible. You could even take a list of all of your old ASINs, maybe download them from Seller Central, or if you use Replen Dashboard, export all of your ASINs that you haven't been selling for a while and run them through Keepa. See what it is that they uh, they are showing for profit or not profitability, but for uh, price history, seller history, et cetera, because you might be able to revitalize and rejuvenate old products that are now good again because you've run them through this list with Keepa. You can either load the list uh, through an import or you can actually copy up to 10,000 ASINs uh, and paste them in there if you're using ASINs or the UPC or EAN codes. So those are the seven different 
pieces of information, the seven different features and functions of Keepa as a software that I recommend using on a regular basis. There are tons of things. There's bestseller lists, top seller lists. You can look in category trees. You can do a ton of things on just the, uh, the Chrome extension itself, but I highly recommend checking out Keepa. If you're interested in how I recommend as well, uh, studying Keepa graphs, that's where you can get access to the free guide at askjimmysmith.com forward slash Keepa guide. And if you are also interested in a free Facebook group that uh, I'm a moderator in, actually. I don't own it. I don't run it. It's not my group. It is somebody else's. But ultimately, this is the one I've been in for over seven years at this point. I love it. And it's the best one out there. bit.ly forward slash MST group. It's free. Um, there's nothing that uh, you have to pay to be in it. You just go there. You uh, help other people and other people help you. And I just love the community that I've been a part of in this group. bit.ly forward slash MST group. So I hope that this this video helps you. I hope that it blesses you, that you take a look at these seven different features of Keepa. Maybe some of them you've, you've used regularly and maybe other ones you've never tried before. And I hope that it helps you to expand your horizons, look at different pieces of data so you can make the best purchasing decisions possible in your business. Keepa is the software that you need to use to be successful from an arbitrage standpoint, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and again, I have no affiliate with uh, Keepa, no affiliation at all. And so I just want to put this information out there because there's so much that you can do with this software and it's relatively inexpensive in comparison to other things that exist out there. So highly recommend uh, going back through this video if you need to watch it multiple times. Those are the seven things. I hope this video helped you. I hope it blesses you. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.